Hmm. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. See, so if you cannot discern a minister who is expressing righteousness, are you listening? You don't, if you can't discern the fruits, if you can't see spiritually, if you are spiritually insecure, you will not see it. I, I'm telling you that when things begin to get really intense here, you're going to see a whole different arena. You're going to see big conglomerate churches, and I'm not saying all of them, but where very wealthy places be exposed because they have put their financial blessings in front of the will of God. People flock there because of financial blessing, because they want to be acknowledged in a location where it's well-known and publicized. And I'm not saying all of them, so everybody understand. But I'm telling you, you're going to find, that's why, I mean, it's amazing to me in the areas of divorce, fornication and adultery, in the high offices of ministry, behind the pulpits, and so forth. Evangelists. You know why? Even though that they were doing, they were out there preaching and so forth and whatever, they had spiritual insecurities because they were not able to see. See, one of the things the enemy does is try to blind us, doesn't he? tries to blind but it's amazing to me that in that arena because people still follow them amen do you understand that and i'm not saying that hey yeah you forgive and whatever but it's amazing to me that an individual can go get divorced and go right behind the pulpit sorry it doesn't agree with me people can get fornication and so forth and come behind the pulpit and start preaching like it's all right. It ain't all right. I believe it's offensive to the Lord. That person needs to take time off and get right with God. You know, if they will take that time off and get right with God, most of the time things get restored in the household. But see, the thing is, is because they have enough money, they can go forward or what they believe. But in true reality, they've gone backwards, not forward. Hallelujah. I don't know where that came from. I know where it came from. Spiritual insecurity is relying on more the natural instead of the spiritual. Amen? Is everybody okay? Second Peter chapter 3. You know, everybody gets tempted, don't they? If you haven't been tempted today in something, something ain't right. Come on, you were tempted to say something, think something, do all kinds of stuff. You went through the grocery store, the girl gave you the wrong change, and you were tempted to keep it. Something the enemy's always trying to do. Tempt you. Always trying to tell you in an area that you married the wrong person, you're in the wrong place, you're doing the wrong thing, this, that, and whatever. He's always trying to tempt you in this certain areas. But people who are spiritually insecure cannot run the race. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 14. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be what? Diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation as also our beloved brother Paul according to the wisdom given to him 
has written to you. As also in all of his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. It's amazing in how many individuals are out there preaching, but they come against the move of the Spirit. They believe that healing isn't anymore, that casting out devils aren't anymore, that speaking in tongues and so forth. They don't believe it anymore. They only believe it's, well, this is it right here. Does everybody see this? They twist their own, to, to, unstable people twist to their own destruction as they do also the rest of the scriptures. They are unstable because they cannot see spiritually. They are bound by the letter and not by the spirit. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. It's called the spirit of error. But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever and ever. Hallelujah. So we want to be found in him without spot and blameless. God is coming for a blemish-free church. That's why all of these things are happening and being exposed right now. We are on this wave that is going to continue on. And it's going to go, these wave, this wave that's going to continue and bring us across the now, wilderness right into the rapture. Go to Zechariah chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zechariah. Chapter 3. Oh, glory. Is everybody there? Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1. Let's read it together. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to what? Oppose him. Wow. Now here is the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And there is Satan standing right next to him to oppose him. You know why? Because he had a right to be there. He's the ruler of this earth. And he's going to oppose anything that you try to do. He's going to impose in you, impart in you, if he can, the spirit of insecurity. In verse 2, And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now, who rebuked Satan? The angel that was with Joshua. Do you understand that? The angel is the one who said, the Lord rebuke you. Amen. Does everybody understand that? The angel couldn't rebuke him. Are you are you, I want you to see this. The angel could not rebuke him. The angel said, the Lord rebuke you. The angel didn't say, I rebuke you. Because he couldn't. Why? Because of Satan's authority. His position in office. And I'm sharing this with you so that you understand you are not fighting some idiot. Even though he's an idiot. He's a head of a military who's very established and they are disciplined. They don't stop until they get you. Do you understand that? They don't quit. They are persistent. Why? Because they know that their existence is at stake. They are persistent. When Jesus was tempted the devil finally left, and he would have said that he would come back at what? An opportune time. Do you know when he loves to attack you? When you're not feeling well. Physically. You got a flu, virus, whatever. Man, he's there right, bam, he's right there. 